Thank you so much, Valen. And we cross now to Pretoria, where the South Africa Ghana state visit is. Uh, uh, the process is starting, really. Yeah. Can't say it's, it's fully underway. The, the president of South Africa, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, waiting besides the um, guard of honor. Uh, we'll stand to see right now if that's about to take place. Yeah. The state president of Ghana, Mr. Nana Ado Dankwa Akufo Ado. Um, yeah. coming through to South Africa. Yeah, the president is just waiting for uh, the Ghanaian president, uh, President Nana Ado uh, Dankwa Akufo Ado, to arrive. And we told this, this state visit aims to strengthen uh, the already good relationship, as we were speaking to our analysts, as well as uh, Mzondile earlier on. And we're told that, you know, Ghana and South Africa have a good political, economic, as well as social relationship. Um, so... If I remember correctly, back in May 2007, uh, there was this permanent joint commission of cooperation that was signed between the two countries. And, you know, mm -hmm. this is a structural bilateral mechanism to help the two countries, be it political, be it social, uh, be it economical. It's essentially the purpose of these continued bilateral interactions between different countries. And this time at South Africa and Ghana, President Cyril Ramaphosa's first hosting of an international head of state since he became president of South Africa. This is the first state visit. Yeah. We're also told that not only will they delve into the political, economic, as well as social, but also scientific and, and technical cooperation uh, between these two countries. As you can see, some movement with regards yes. to the motorcade, so we anticipate the president of Ghana coming in here. Let's cross now live to our political reporter on the scene, Mzondile Mbechi. Mzondile, what are you saying? Thank you very much, uh, Blaine. Uh, we can see President Suru Ramaphosa waiting for his counterpart, uh, who is just arriving. So he will be greeting him, and then the official uh, state visit uh, will begin. So once it begins, you will hear those uh, 21 gun salutes as part of uh, receiving the head of state. If it's a full uh, state visit, uh, then you have the 21 gun salute. Of course, the uh, plane underscoring the very cordial relations that these two countries have as they start to make their way uh, towards uh, their, the Nelson Mandela Amphitheatre where the delegations are waiting for them. What's in the lineup? The two uh, presidents, as we can say, see, they are here now. Yes, Blaine. Sorry, um, so I, I was just uh, talking about in terms of what's uh, on the cards for today. What's the procedure? The, 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 the president of South Africa, uh, Blaine, in the past few weeks or maybe months, has been very strong on saying he wants investment uh, to come into the country. Uh, because once investment comes into the country, it will be able to deal with a range of uh, issues uh, like unemployment, uh, poverty and inequality as part of that drive. So this uh, gathering today will look at the issues of trade relations and uh, st striking a few uh, bilateral deals just to ensure that uh, the investment uh, increases between these two countries. That is why after the events here at the Union Buildings, they will make their way um, to the business forum, the South Africa Ghana Business Forum, yeah. so which will be addressed by both presidents. So they will be speaking to businesses from uh, either side, really to uh, impress upon them the importance of uh, investing in each other's countries. South Africa Airplane uh, has already invested a number of um, uh, there is a, there's a number of companies that are operating in Ghana, but of course it, it can never be enough. And then I think Ghana is looking at exploring a number of opportunities here in the country, as you can see them uh, making their way uh, towards uh, the Nelson Mandela Amphitheatre, where the state visit will officially begin. I guess the two leaders will also further discuss issues of mutual interest and concerns at a, a continental and global level, isn't it, Zinzoy? Uh, the, the, these two leaders belong to very important bodies in their regional um, countries. Uh, currently, South Africa is the chair of SADC, and then Ghana is an important member of uh, ECOWAS, ECOWAS, that 15-member uh, body of the Economic uh, uh, Society of, of, of West Africa. So that, that relationship uh, of them being key 
in their regional bodies, then it's part of um, uh, de deliberating about the already e e talked about issue of the continental free trade. Uh, both these countries have signed um, the agreement towards the continental free trade. Mm -hmm. So with uh, the intra-Africa trade uh, being the issue and they are doing something about it and I'm sure they may be speaking more about it as to how to work it. And if Ghana plane last year it decided that uh, every African who comes to Ghana doesn't need to uh, apply for visa so he will get visa on arrival. That is part of um, easing up uh, the, the movement of people so that uh, once people are easily moving between the continent and the countries so they are able to the issues to that effect to discuss. Yeah. Zai, the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, you touched on it a bit. It, it remains a big conversation on, in the rest of the continent. What influence do these two leaders have on the continent to drive this process and try and convince the rest of the countries that have not come on board? If you look at the, the, the strategy, Look, these two countries, South Africa is uh, located in, in the SADC region and then uh, Ghana located in West Africa. And those are very important economies uh, on the continent. Um, yes, Nigeria in the West Africa uh, may be the biggest, but uh, the, 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 the relations that South Africa has always enjoyed with Ghana really puts it in a unique position to be able to drive uh, the continental agenda forward. And Ghana, uh, it, it is very significant. It is the first um, sub-Saharan country to gain independence in 1957. So when everyone else was trying to uh, fight for their independence, Ghana was basically the role model. If Ghana could achieve it, why, um, why others couldn't? So whatever is happening in terms of speaking about developing the continent, these two countries are quite important. That is why um, it's very significant. And that, uh, they play this role and uh, they work together as we begin to uh, focus on the um, pomp and ceremony that begins the official ceremony right now. So that yeah, the two leaders will further discuss these issues of mutual the, interest. The two presidents there. highly topical will be security, peace, and stability uh, in, the, in the continent. So let's take in some of the, the sights and sounds live from Pretoria for the state visit. Very soon we'll be seeing the national anthems, or rather hearing the national anthems, and then it will be the 21 gun salute as the president of Ghana, President Nana Akufo Addo, is welcomed to South Africa for a state visit. It's also significant to note that uh, this is the, state, the first state visit President Ramaphosa is receiving uh, from a foreign head of state. I know that uh, a few weeks ago he did receive uh, the president of um, uh, Western Sahara, but there was, there was a working visit, so which does not have the full military honors. And the issue of Western Sahara is still being um, discussed um, with regards to the role of Morocco.
The president of Ghana just inspected a guard of honor there as he undertakes the state visit to South Africa. We expect very soon the national anthems. The President of South Africa introducing the President of Ghana to the Cabinet of South Africa, starting with the Deputy President uh, David Mabuza. There are also a number of ministers, and uh, I've seen the Ambassador to Ghana, the former Minister uh, Lulu Kumwana. These two presidents are on an investment drive uh, in these two countries. President Ramaphosa is already organizing what he calls an investment summit uh, that uh, should take place around late August or September. And I think occasions like these so will really help towards that cause. Because after this event, the two presidents will address the business forum comprising of uh, both the business people from Ghana and South Africa. Mzoi, um, perhaps not a good thing hankering on to the old days and thinking of the days of Jerry Rollins. 
um, this president is not wearing the, the, the famous Kenta material, or you would think that his wife, Rebecca Akufo-Addo, would have a, just a semblance of, of, of showing off the, the very colorful Ghanaian heritage. Um, what's your sense of these first images? It's quite interesting. Um, you know, as he's uh, greeting the, 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 the South Africa's uh, members of the executive, you remember that during his speech, when he had just uh, won the elections, he was actually accused of having uh, copied some parts of uh, George Bush and uh, Bill Clinton. So other people were going as far as saying he idolizes the West so much that uh, he is uh, even forgetting about uh, uh, his own people. His own but culture. of course, um, that was the opinion of people. Um, he is uh, one person really who is very strong as well in saying South Africa, rather Africa, must stand up. As you'd recall that interaction he had with uh, the president of France, uh, Emmanuel Macron, uh, sometime last year. So where he basically said um, Africa is actually able to stand on its own, yeah. is not necessarily reliant on, uh, on, on, on donors, so it wants trade, so it wants to be treated as such. So I would assume, uh, Desiree, that uh, it's probably his, uh, his choice, not uh, being influenced by anything else. Mzoi, is it any indication at all of how seriously President Cyril Ramaphosa takes this visit, the fact that an almost seemingly full cabinet is there? Given that uh, the current administration of President Ramaphosa has made it clear that its priority is the economy, it's, it's natural that uh, engagements like this uh, bring a whole lot of members of the executive so that they explore every available opportunity where the growth in the economy could be exploited. I think uh, that would really inform uh, his thinking behind all of this. Um, as I was speaking about the investment summit that uh, he's preparing for later this year, the much so talked about investment summit. He will summit. probably be sharing some of these issues. Yes, absolutely. So he'll be sharing some of the, of, the, of the ideas that he has because he said he wanted to engage as many people as possible. Um, with the signing of the African trade, uh, free trade area, so I think this is really a, a, a good start uh, for the president and that Ghana was made to be the first one to come visit uh, South Africa on a state visit, I guess, says a lot about uh, the relationship between these two countries, uh, Desiree. Do you have any sense of all um, in terms of the composition of, of his delegation, uh, uh, President uh, Adua Gufo? It's mainly the, what you'd call the economic cluster. Uh, his delegation is mainly comprises of the ministers, which we in South Africa would say uh, they belong to the economic <coughs> cluster. So basically this relationship uh, uh, is, is, is exploiting, uh, uh, or rather exploring, the economic opportunities that exist between these two countries. Politically, we know they're very strong, they're very cordial, uh, dating from the days when uh, the first uh, president of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah, where he made it clear that uh, as much as Ghana was free back then, as, as, as long as the rest of the continent wasn't free, so Ghana wasn't free as well. So then the, the political relations were really built over time. So those ones, we can say they are, they are now fine. So, but what I think the continent hasn't done, including Ghana, is that they have not been able to really tap onto the economic activities. I mean, Ghana, I would say, spent a lot of time, I think between 1957 and 1981, a fighting. Remember, there was a number of coups that were happening, so the country couldn't develop properly. It's, it was only after 1981 when the situation or the government started to stabilize. And it's actually a beacon of hope because in Ghana we've seen the change of power without the bloodshed. So with these um, foundations, so these two countries could really do so much.
And if you just joined us, you are watching uh, live visuals of President Senator Ramaphosa hosting President Nana Ado Dankwa Akufo Ado of Ghana today. He's here on a state visit and uh, we're told that Ghana and South Africa share a good relationship and Ghana is said to have good political, economic and social relationships with South Africa. Desiree, you've been to, to Ghana a few times. If people watching that haven't been there, just give us a sense of what that country is like uh, in terms of the fashion, in terms of the food. It's a country of 28.20 million people, half the size of South Africa. So you already almost immediately get the sense of the kind of interaction that might be a little bit skewed to South Africa, mm. which is one of the points um, that the good doctor highlighted earlier on, mm. that most interactions with South Africa um, are, are sometimes skewed to our side because of uh, uh, the, the sheer size of our economy and our population. But there, there you see delicacies. some of the delicacies coming from Ghana. I don't know if they can show us jollof rice. Oh, I oh, love there jollof rice. I have Jollof that, rice. Yeah. I wonder if uh, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa has got that <laughs> prepared for his guests. Um, uh, and some of the beautiful colors. We must see some kente material. Uh, yeah. The beautiful colors of, of, of culture. And, yeah. and it's, it's a beautiful country. Indeed. Yeah. I must make a trip. Absolutely. <laughs> it, it, it's never a bad idea to travel the continent and just try and find out how our brothers and sisters across the border. Indeed.